Welcome everyone to this month's Creatrix Conversations. And it is my pleasure to have Aurora Farber with me as my guest. Welcome, Aurora. Yay, I'm so excited. This is going to be really, really fun. Mm -hmm. And it will be. So a little bit of background. Aurora and I have become uh, biz besties, priestess uh, friends over the last couple of years. And we use Voxer a lot, back and forth, talking all the time. And so we talk about things like alchemy and how, how's, you know, what's the al alchemy happening in your world? And hmm, what is the lesson in this? And what is alchemically coming up? So when I thought about this topic, there was just no one else that I wanted to have as a guest other than Aurora, because she really understands the, um, you know, the, the, the process of this in a very embodied way, and certainly from the, um, the, the lens of the archetypes, the archetypal work that we both do. So this is going to be great. <laughs> yeah, yes. Now you've outed us. We have a Voxer relationship. <laughs> That is our alchemical container of transformation. A lot, a lot happens in that uh, boxer chat. <laughs> yes, it does. I love that. It, it is an alchemical container of transformation. We're going to be talking more about what that means in a minute. So hello. Natalia. Yeah. And in case you're new to this group, this community, hello and welcome. My name is Flora and I am the hostess of this space, Awaken the Goddess Within. And every month, I come on live uh, talking about some topic that I feel is relevant and inspiring for the community. And often I'm solo, but this year I've started to weave in a few guests like this so that we can have live conversations. And so, so Aurora, why don't you start us off? Because I know that we, and this is something that I love to do as well. Like let's begin with some definitions so that we're all on the same page. Yeah, absolutely. So for me, when I think about alchemy, um, you know, when you look it up or you think about the history of alchemy, it really was that practice of the medieval chemical scientists, the earliest scientists who wanted to transform something based like lead into gold. So um, here I have a definition I want to read out. It says it was a <clears throat> medieval chemical science and speculative philosophy aiming to achieve the transmutation of base metals into gold, the discovery of a universal cure for disease, and the discovery of a means of indefinitely prolonging life. Mm -hmm. So with this whole alchemy, you may have heard of the philosopher's stone, the alchemical mm -hmm. stone. So there was this great interest at that time of turning, uh, you know, think about it, the Middle Ages was a time of despair and you know kind of hopelessness and poverty and you know all of that and so the alchemists were looking for this kind of cure for everything and so what does it mean in everyday life um, another definition is it's a power or process that changes or transforms something in a mysterious or impressive way now I really love that you like that too Flora yeah <laughs> yeah yeah. So it, it, you know, in a nutshell for me, because, you know, there, there is the, the, uh, the roots of it that has to do with, you know, um, science and chemical transformations and actually turning something like lead into gold. That's what the early alchemists wanted to do, but there's also the spiritual alchemy. And that's the kind of alchemy that I work with, that Flora works with. We don't have like labs in our basements or anything. <laughs> But instead, or, it's really, do I? or do I? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, instead, it's really <clears throat> an alchemy of the heart. It's about transmutation. It's about changing um, what is in the shadow, what is uh, like heavy and bringing it into something that becomes precious, turning something base into something precious. That's how I think of alchemy. Mm hmm. Wonderful. Thank you for starting us off with all of that. And it, it you know, it, it, it kind of delights me uh, to think about those early alchemists where, um, you know, it just feels like science and mysticism and spirituality were so much more closely connected. 
right? Mm -hmm. Whereas nowadays they've, you know, it's almost like they've become two very distinct camps, if you were, right? Whereas like the alchemists really had that um, combined, that combined sense. So yeah, so changing states, that's really, that's really it. Alchemy is a process of, ch of changing from one state to another. And I'm glad that you clarified that what we're talking about and why I called this alchemy of the soul is that we're concerned with that more spiritual changing of states or, you know, or even really an emotional changing of states. <laughs> yeah, I think there's also something about alchemy that implies that the transformation is permanent or semi-permanent, right? Like this isn't just like, oh, we had a good day. Like I was able to change out of my bad mood, but then like, it, like if the next day I'm right back into the same pattern or mood, then the alchemy hasn't, hasn't truly occurred. What are your thoughts on that, right? Well, what my thought is on that is here she comes, the alchemical goddess. <laughs> so, you know, Flora and I are both 13 moon priestesses. We um, are, have been trained by Elaine Kalila Doughty and um, she was trained by Ariel Spilsbury, who is the founder of the 13 moon mystery school. So I wanted to just give props to them and shout outs to them and gratitude for everything that I've learned by being in their presence. They have really activated. And then for you too, Flora, um, you know, this, this wisdom to come alive in our body. And so when you're talking about um, permanence, right? <laughs> the thing about the alchemical goddess is she is all about ceaseless change, mm. ceaseless change. And I know that for many of us, myself included, there's this tendency, this way of being, way of thinking that, oh, if I can just get here, if I can just, you know, get out of this kind of mindset, if I can just have this degree, if I can just be this shape or this size or, you know, whatever, like there's this goal mentality. And if I can get there, then I've arrived. And yet the feminine mystery is all about the cycles of life that there, mm -hmm. there's always life and death and rebirth. And the alchemical goddess invites us to know that the one thing that we can count on is ceaseless change. Mm -hmm. So the beauty of alchemy is that when you learn to work with alchemy in the moment, you it, it's, it's as though, yeah, like the next day you were saying the next day, oh, it comes back again. So really, if you want to think of a kind of progression, what comes to mind for me is it's a progression of evolution. It's as though perhaps we get to this place where we're in the, I'm, I'm seeing it like um, wheels, you know, perhaps we're in this place of shadow and heaviness. And then we work with our own inner alchemy, the alchemy of the soul. And then we come kind of, we feel that lightness, right? But then we have that next moment of oh, coming crashing back down, but hope what's happening is that as we transmute the shadow and we work with it and we do it faster and that's what i think has really helped flora and i through working with the 13 moon mystery school is we now have tools and techniques and archetypes that help us work with it faster that um cyclical rhythm begins to kind of raise higher so that yes. we don't fall as far down into the heaviness and mm -hmm. even though we may feel like we've hit the bottom it's like okay What's the tool I need in this moment? Yeah. What can I rely on? Ceaseless change. Okay, I'm here. You know, mm. it, there's an excitement, I think, to, to alchemy in the sense and this knowing that we are on an evolutionary path. Mm -hmm. Yes, so true. Yeah, love that about that we have the tools uh, and, and the awareness so that we don't, you know, go all the way back down, or we don't retreat all all the way back into the into the shadows or into the pattern. And and so the alchemy is, you know, it's continuing to work work on us. You know, I guess I just I feel inspired to share one of my personal stories um, with uh, with alchemy. Oh, and um, you know, it happened with when I was on my. Uh, Ireland retreat, actually, the, the moment that I'm thinking of, because um, my co-facilitator and one of our wonderful moderators here in the group, Gioti, led a womb healing ceremony. 
um, the the Munaiki, the thirteen, you know, the Peruvian womb healing ceremony. In preparing for that ceremony, I was, you know, I was thinking about stuff to do with my womb, my relationship with my womb, you know, all the all the things. And what was very present for me was that I was ready at that point to really let go of my shame of having had uh, an, a cesarean birth. My son was born by emergency cesarean. And of course I'd wanted a home water birth, right? Like I'm, I'm the kind of person that has a home water birth. I have this like judgment, right? So I still felt a lot of shame around the fact that uh, of this cesarean birth. And so it had been years, my son was, my son was five. So I clearly worked through a lot of it over years on my own, but in that moment and with the ceremony and the rite and the ritual and being witnessed by that group of women, and it was a very, very simple ritual, but the alchemy, the alchemical healing, which is the other term that we use in the 13 moon uh, priestess lineage of, that we are experiencing alchemical healing and that alchemical healing that occurred for me in that moment it was just like it just was an instant and then it was done and my shame over having a cesarean birth has in fact never returned it was just gone wow yeah yeah, yeah. beautiful that, that is, you know, so powerful. And I love that you shared that. And, you know, just for anyone that's listening out there, if they have that resonant story that, you know, I just feel like there's a seed of hope in that, whether it's shame about a cesarean or any kind of shame that we may hold. I really feel for that your story is a testament to the power of alchemy and mm -hmm. it can, how it can really, really change your life because mm -hmm. you releasing that story, I'm sure has had, uh, ripple effects on your relationship to your body, you know, your belief in your own capacity, um, your relationship to the universe and how it holds you. So, yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, and, and certainly my relationship to my son as well. Exactly, and, yes. And, and how he was born and, and how it, but I, I also, I'm, uh, you know, I, I have to think that if I had tried to do that years earlier, because like maybe, you know, mentally or, you know, my ego, like I wanted to be done with it when I really just wasn't quite done with it. I think that I would have experienced more of like what we're talking where we still loop back or we kind of spiral back through a, an issue an initiation, a, a wounded pattern in our life. And I loved what you said earlier that it's, we just don't, we don't go entirely back. Like even when a, a wound comes up again in our life and we think, oh, I thought that I was done healing this. Like, why are, why am I still facing this, right? Didn't you and I just have these conversations the yes. other day, right? <laughs> I thought thing. I was done. Oh I no, thought I my was dear. Faceless change, count on it. <laughs> right. Um, we aren't ever back in the exact same place. We, we are always returning to it with a slightly different perspective. And, you know, whether you think like, you're going deeper, you're ascending higher in the spiral or however you think of it. So it's very true, but I, I have had, you know, that being one profound moment that I can remember, but I've had more than that. I've had more profound moments with the alchemical healing where it is very, it is complete and it feels just so complete and, and done. And it's really a powerful, powerful uh, experience. So I mean, if you have an experience that you want to share now, I want to invite you to, or else I thought maybe let's start talking about these processes of alchemy. Yeah. Um, well, I kind of, I have both. I have yeah. a story, <laughs> I have a painting and I can talk about the processes. So there you go. <laughs> mm, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So what I find, and, and, you know, I just want to say to everyone that's listening, um, both Flora and I, we have Mercury and Scorpio <laughs> in our astrological chart. So we always joke on Voxer that if we leave these, you know, 11, 12, Voxer actually cuts you off at 15 minutes, we've discovered. <laughs> but we blame it on our Mercury and Scorpio because we love to like dive deep into these kind of conversations and see what arises. And so I'm just having so much fun. And I just wanted to say that uh, for everyone. So 
this is what happens a lot in our Voxer conversation. She says something and I'm like, oh, and then it's just kind of like this pinging magic that happens between us. So as you were sharing, Flora, about your story and your experience about your womb, I was thinking so much about, um, you know, I, I have a program called I Am She, Awaken the Sacred Feminine Leader Within. And one of the principles, is the acronym is sacred. So I just spent the last month in the sacred key of alchemy, right? So it's like divine timing that we're having this conversation, but I've really been immersed in what alchemy means to me. And I do feel like, even though, uh, as I share just kind of a simple process, a way to think of it, it's, I just want to reflect that it's always a personal, it's an inner process that, that we go through. So I'm going to share, um, the three keys to alchemy. And I learned this from, um, our mentor, Elaine Kalila Dowdy. And this is the way I love to teach it because it's simple, um, and you can get a sense of it. So, um, the first thing that alchemy requires is a strong container. The stronger the transformation you desire, the stronger the container needs to be. So you can even think of the ancient alchemists when they were heating up that container, if it was like a fragile little, uh, you know, pot, it would break because of the heat, right? So you need a strong container. Even in Flora's story, she had a strong container. She was on this pilgrimage with this sisterhood that was already probably deeply connected with someone who knew how to do a womb um, healing. She had a very strong container, right? So again, the strong, the deeper the transformation, the stronger the container needs to be. So that's the first principle. The second is you need to have the thing that's to be transmuted because again, like the ancient alchemists, they wanted to turn something base into something precious. So they had to have copper or tin or lead. You have to have that prime materia, that, that thing to put into the container, right? So for in alchemical work, alchemy of the soul, that is usually the shadow. It's the thing that is keeping you from living your best life. It's the thing that you're not aware of. It's the thing that rises up when you're having a coaching session or, or what it's the thing that rises up when you're triggered, perhaps. Yeah. So that's the second ingredient. And then the third is you have to have heat. You have to have heat and friction. So if you have two of these, whether it's the uh, cauldron or the heat, or whether it's the, the, you know, the shadow and the cauldron, but you don't have the heat, alchemy will not occur. And so my visual that I want to share with you, because through this process, we've been painting, um, working on our light shield. And this is a, it's going to be different than when I first painted it, but your story floor reminded me of this because the womb is the, you know, the creative cauldron, right? Mm -hmm. So we painted onto our light shields of this cauldron and you can see this is the, so this is the visual. Um, this is the strong container. This is the heat at the bottom. And what this used to say before I painted sacred limits, it used to say limitation because that's what I chose to put in my cauldron. That's what I worked with last moon cycle. The moon cycle can also be a container. It's a container of time. It's a container of energy. So for the whole moon cycle, I worked with this word limitation. And as I work through my own processes of alchemy, this is <clears throat> what came through to me was that limitations can actually be a benefit when they are not limiting our essence from coming through. Actually limitations when we can kind of see them as uh, the limitations that we set that are sacred, that help us align with uh, sovereignty, alchemy, communion, remembrance, ecstasy, and devotion for me, then those are sacred limits that I actually want to embrace. And so through the month, I had a container. I had my group that I was leading. I painted it on here. I added the fire. And what the heat is, is it's the devotion to work with it. It's the devotion, even when it's tough and painful, even when you're feeling so much emotion that you still, you don't like just turn the turn the stove off. You just keep, you keep the heat. Maybe sometimes you have to take a break. You know, you have to know your sacred limits, but for me, I knew in this container of the moon cycle, last moon, I wanted to work with limitations and I looked through contemplation. So the process, even though it has fire, it doesn't have to be hard and painful. Sometimes it is, but you can also go through it with your own sovereign choice of being in contemplation of 
going through it with gentleness. And so if it gets to be too hot to like, come back, come back to yourself, take care. That's how limitation turned into sacred limits because it was starting to get too hot. And then I was starting to notice like, oh, I need to put some sacred limits into my life. So this is sort of my illustration of what alchemy <laughs> is. And at the top, I had written the moon before it dare dream big. So it's, you know, only natural that limitation would go along with that. So that's, um, yeah. yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. For sharing all of that. And, and I, you know, I'm always so inspired by your sacred art projects and how visual you are in your, in your work. And <clears throat> I really, uh, yeah, I just, I was also really struck by what you said just right there at the end about how your, um, like your intention or kind of your, your big wish was that dare to dream big, right? And that's, that's like, it, you know, in this work, this spiritual psychology, that's like the light work, right? Dare to dream big. But what happens when we do that, when we open ourselves up to, to dare to dream big is that then it's like, that's how the shadow comes up because all of the ways that we subconsciously believe that we are not allowed to dream big or that we just can't dream big or that you know it's not safe for us to dream big it, that's how this work the light and the shadow works together that's right yeah absolutely so it's um it's a beautiful process of just being in an alchemy and again i i just love that phrase that the stronger or the the deeper the transformation the stronger the container needs to be yeah. so you know we can have moments of transformation that are not so huge but like you with your story about your womb you really needed a strong container because you had been holding that for five years and that's why you had such a deep transformation if you had just maybe listened to an audio womb meditation you might not have had such a deep med uh, transformation right yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. think about shame and any shadow, really any wound that we carry. The thing that me the most to be willing to go on the journey is to know, first of all, that, you know, I am, I am capable of transmuting this. Like I, I am capable of that. And not only that is this knowing that within the shadow lies the gift. It's mm. like, within the fertile earth lies the seed and you know one of the uh, other celebrations for me last moon was that you know i've been studying the gene keys a long time and i finally did the certification to become a guide so i'm looking forward to you know working more deeply with that kind of alchemy because the combination between the 13 moon school and the gene keys is really powerful because they both really have to do with the core is remembering who you truly are working through your shadow so that you can be in your light and the teaching from the gene keys that's really inspiring to me is this idea that within the shadow is the gift and so when we even look at something like shame like what is the gift in shame you know sometimes it's hard to feel into that but through the and this is a gene key process of their the values is um contemplation is one is to be thinking about it even to you know to, to just be in aware of like how is this showing up for me and then to ask yourself questions inquiry right to ask yourself questions like um where does this come from is this shame really mine mm -hmm. and then of course to um the third principle is gentleness to be gentle with yourself like if it becomes too much to take a break and and like be here now to be here in the body be laugh go do whatever you need to do and you can always come back to contemplating it later and then to have patience, sometimes it takes a while to unlock the shadow. And it's hard for us in a world that's very, um, we want instant gratification. It's like, I want to get rid of my shame now. <laughs> right. But, but like, I wanna, you, Laura, I, yeah. And I want to achieve my big goal now. Right. Like, right. It was, yeah. Right. But for you, you know, you just even had that inner knowing that I needed to be with it for five years because somehow within that wound of shame about your cesarean birth there was this gift that is showing up right now that you get to tell this story you know that hopefully is planting a seed and someone to say oh she had that shame story and i resonate with my own shame story and she overcame it 
because she was deeply held. And so, you know, it's just that way of looking at the world and saying, you know, how is the universe conspiring to help me, to help me evolve, to support me? I feel like that is one of the most beautiful teachings um, that, that's really supported me in facing when it gets really hot, when it gets really hot in alchemy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it does get hot. And so you and I, I mean, you and I have chosen the, the, the priestess path and this accelerated, uh, you know, trajectory of spiritual and personal growth. And, you know, the, and the women that we work with that come into our programs as well. And, you know, and it makes me um, you know, just I want to share about how this is why in my She Spirals uh, Mystery School program, where we're working with the 13 archetypes, that it's the container, the strong container is the, I mean, it's the sisterhood, but it's also the strong energetic container of the lineage of the 13 Moon Mystery School. Um, you know, as, as the, you know, as the focalizer of that, uh, you know, my strong container is also contributing to it. So there's multiple factors, right, that go into it. And then, because then right away, like what you said, you need prime material. And the first alchemical process that we start with, with the, is with great the great mother archetype and it's negredo and it is described as literally <laughs> scraping the bottom of the cauldron for that muck uh yeah the shadow the wounds all of that and it's you know i i know that sometimes women are a little bit like oh it's like hey we're beginning and it's like okay so what's your prime material what's your negredo what's the shadow that you're here to transmute right like right away <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it is and it's fascinating and you know through that journey of the full year to hold you because that's also you know a container that goes through all seasons right and the 13 moon um, path is connected to those seasons as well so all of that holds you and um yeah, it's not the normal way that you would think, okay, I'm going to start this thing and then oh, we're going to look at the shadow. But uh, I'd love to just speak to the power of that. Mm -hmm. Again, is when you truly know that in the shadow, shadow is the gift, why wouldn't you want to scrape the bottom of the cauldron? <laughs> like there is something wonderful in there and it may not feel that way in the beginning, but there is something beautiful to unearth. And I know you know, I've been around this wheel of the 13 moon, I don't know, nine years or something. So every year I work with my prime material and it truly changes my life. So I work with it through each of the archetypes, like, you know, like in your program, she spirals. Um, and then I, each of the archetypes help me see it in a different way. Mm. But it's like it brings it back to the cauldron heats it up dissolves it puts it on fire again it's just and very end and that's the whole path of the 13 moon mystery school is like you trust and release and then at the very end you get the alchemical goddess i am union i am freedom i am grace and that's the beauty of it it's like you get to be freed from this and though it may show up in another form like flora said earlier you have the tools to deal with it faster. My negredo in the past could put me out for months, mm. you know, like my story, my limiting belief, or even years, I would say. But now on this process, I, I'm just like, okay, this is what I'm working with. This is what I'm working with this year. What is the gift? What is the gift? <laughs> yes. What is the gift? Okay. So that's amazing. So I'm curious too, like, how have you noticed um, that prima materia shadow that you work with uh, change over the years? Or do, does it still feel like variations on the same story? Or you know, how, does, how does that show up for you? Well, you know, it's interesting for me because we start with the archetype of the great mother. And so for many women, there's a lot of material with our own mother relationships. I mean, really, there is a lot of material. Um, to work with, whether it's, you know, neglect, abandonment, over responsibility, shame, you know, all these different things can come up from that. Just that primary 
biological relationship, right? Let alone the relationship with the great mother, right? The feminine. So for me, I am blessed to have the most amazing mother in the world. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I I really feel so happy um, to have that. But at the same time, I had to kind of dig for my own shadow work. So in the beginning, it had to do a lot with comparing my own mothering. Like, am I as great a mother as my mother? Oh, yeah. Oh, I know know that one. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. (laughs) So it, it, that happened. And then the next year it was more, I I can't remember all the different ones, but I just would know I'd come to the great mother and I'd be, I'd think there can't be anything left. Like I, I already, it's, if I felt like I was a little bit ahead, like a little bit higher up in the cauldron because I have such a great mom, but there's always something. And so it has changed for me. It's gone from that relationship with my mother to my relationship with the great mother. Mm-hmm. And so I can give the example last year, the primary, um, the great O I was working with was this way in which I pitted my humanity and my divinity as hierarchical. Like mm-hmm. I thought that being a priestess, being spiritual was better than my own humanity, like my body, my physical human self. And so I worked through the whole year uh, through that process. And it was interesting as we moved from great mother to goddess of compassion. I remember, and sometimes it comes to you in synchronistic ways. When you really say I'm on this path, I heard that song by India Ari about, it's called uh, I am light. And there's a phrase in there that says something like, I am divinity defined. I am God on the inside. And I couldn't sing those songs. Like a lot of the mystery comes to me through music and uh, lyrics. And I couldn't sing it. Like I, I just couldn't believe because I couldn't believe that I am div- divinity defined. Mm. I just didn't believe it. I'm like, no, one day when I'm good enough, like there was this pitting against. And so by the end of the year, it was so magic as part of, you know, what we do is receive. And as an intuitive Oracle, I received three symbols and signs. And one of them um, was an orrery, which I didn't even know what it was. <laughs> I had to look it up. Like, what is a metal model of planets moving around it? And so that's what it is. It's like a, a metal model of planets moving around it. And at the end of the year, I was watching this show that I was led to watch. And the woman finds this key and she has to unlock this orrery that goes into a whole other world and everything. And at the vo- very bottom of it, and I took a picture of it, it said, I am. And that's what my primary work was last year is to be not I am human I am divine I am human or I'm divine no it's the simplicity of the I am Mm. I am (laughs) yeah wow (laughs) (laughs) I love that yeah so it's it's like magical when you in and that's again the skill and the practice not really the skill is the practice of contemplation it's like being open-eyed in the mystery and looking for the signs and symbols and then you know like when I saw that I felt so held by the universe I was like okay I've I couldn't sing that those lyrics I couldn't sing it because I didn't believe it was true and through these archetypes setting this thing on fire separating it (laughs) putting it back together again I come to this thing that it says there's an orrery and it says I am It is time to claim your place in the universe as I am. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I love when you said, you know, walking open eyed in the mystery, right. And, and paying attention to those synchronicities and to those symbols. Um, And it just feels like, you know, I really think that, you know, the, the yin yang was actually probably the first spiritual symbol that I really gravitated to as in my youth. And, you know, I'm just, so I'm just sitting with that right now, even as a concept as, and a symbol, because this work of alchemy of the soul and this, this soul healing is like bringing the light of our awareness to the shadow and then 
bringing the wisdom, the gifts, the gold from, from the shadow into back into the light. And then it's like this continual process that it feels like that it's just so, and it is, like you said, it's so liberating that yes, it can feel tough. It can feel challenging, but honestly, I, my personal experience is that it's, it's, only really tough and heavy and and hard and you know horrible when we're trying to do it alone mm. yeah right. yeah it, it feels so much more intense when you're trying to do it alone and and when you don't really have tools to work with it you know you just feel all the feelings and you don't know what to do with it you don't have a container mm-hmm. right yes that's right. The container. I was in that for years. Like yeah. I didn't have the container. And so just the same shadows showed up for decades, actually. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, why am I caught in this again? There's a good gift in that. I've been holding it for decades. What's the gift? <laughs> yeah. Right? But yeah. through the awareness of knowing that there's a gift, I've been able to unlock it. And, and that's the other thing I'd love to just share is like when you unlock, you know, one of the things that we say in 13 Moon Mystery School is what we do, we do it for ourselves, but we do it for the one, mm-hmm. you know, for the one heart. And so as I work through my alchemy, as Flora does, as you who are listening works through your own alchemy, you're helping to raise that the shadow, the collective shadow, because you know, in the gene keys, you can learn more about that, but these shadows are rooted in our DNA. That's what the gene keys are about. The 64, um, light, uh, shadow gift and cities Mm. corresponding to our 64 gene. So the gene keys. So these things are in our history and our ancestry, um, this collective trauma, but as we raise it in ourselves, it, it provides like a breath, (gasps) inspiration to others and you know even for me and that story of seeing that I am with the orrery you I don't know what that was going to lead into but then this year I created my program I am she and now I get to hold a group of women and explore for a whole month alchemy but I didn't know that but it was my willingness to be okay there is this split in me and how can I really you know be an alchemical priestess if I don't, if I think that somehow being spiritual is better than being me, Aurora, yeah. the human person. Like I had to come into um, integration with that. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, you know, that's fabulous because what you're, t- you're speaking about is, you know, that is one of the shadow aspects of the priestess archetype is that spiritual superiority. Yeah. And- and so, you know, you needed to, to transmute that, to come into the communion, right. Of your both, you're, you're both human and divine. I am, I love it. It's so powerful. Such well, a great. Um, thank you for that little hook. See, this is why it's great to do things together because <laughs> when you said that, I remember, oh, and wasn't my archetypal ally for the year, the priestess. Ah, uh, uh-huh. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> That's right. That's right. right. Um, and, and this is, yeah, because this is what I you know, will always be saying to the women that are doing the archetypal work with me in She Spirals is that, oh, just because, you know, one of the archetypes is your, you know, your strongest express, like your, your primary or whatever. Oh, don't think that that's going to make it any easier. <laughs> like the initiations are going to be even more amplified. And, um, you know, there's also... Yeah, there's so much gold to be found in the shadow archetype. So this has been really wonderful. Now, I feel like there was a... Um, I wonder who your archetypal ally is this year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, oh, is it? Mm. You have it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not trying to laugh because we have the inside joke here, but that is... So my archetypal ally this year is the alchemical goddess. And so she, she sits in the center of the, of the moon mat. I don't, I only have a black and white version, but the alchemical goddess is the center point. It's the integration. Um, and so, yes. So Aurora, thank you for reminding me that of course, all of the strengths and the shadow qualities of that archetype are, are amplified. So just to give people just a quick two, we start with great mother, which is akin to the um, 
new moon, dark moon. And right now we are with the goddess of love. We are, you know, we're halfway through the year and the goddess of love is very connected to the energy of the full moon. So I'm just, yeah, witnessing that the beautiful journey that we make like the moon and, and everything. Yeah. I feel like there was, was there something else that you had wanted to share or did you, you did get to share your story that about, uh, about alchemy? Well, I guess the, what's coming to me now is just, as you put that beautiful, I love that moon mat uh, board, um, is just the, the moon, how the moon can also be an alchemical container for mm -hmm. you to work with, you know, for, for people who are just starting. So I thought I might give some tips on working with alchemy. And mm -hmm. I, I'm still just giggling that, you know, you call you're called to do a creatrix conversation on alchemy and you're like, oh, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> alchemical goddess is my yeah. ally, right? So that's another way that just tickles me. It's like a universe tickle that the universe is here supporting both of us, right? Um, and all of us really. So, you know, tips on working with, um, alchemy or your shadow are to like, just become aware of your triggers instead of, Oh, you know, getting mad and doing whatever you do and all that. Uh, we all do it. I just did it yesterday. I had to have an alchemical, uh, <laughs> boxer conversation with Laura yesterday. Um, be aware of it. Right. And you know, when you can take a step back and be in the witness mode of yourself, go, Oh, okay. Look at that. Bring it into contemplation. Look, what is actually triggered? can name it like for me yesterday I was like I I want to feel grounded I want to feel rooted you know this thing that was happening in my life for, so I brought it into contemplation another thing you can do is journal about it I find that often through journaling your soul will speak to you and even if you just want to write what is this feeling you know of wanting to be grounded and just allow your yourself to write in automatic writing and then if you need it get witnessing like Flora said it's not it's harder when you do it alone. So she didn't have to fix me. She didn't have to tell me what I needed to do or provide a solution. She was just like, her response is back to me. Oh, I really feel you, you know, in, and, um, you know, holding you as you move through this. Right. So get that witnessing if you need it from someone that you trust. Um, and then again, know that you are a sacred vessel that you have, you know, this, uh, ability to transmute, that you have this creative cauldron inside of you and it's part of your evolution to move forward. Um, yeah, so those are like practical ways that you can use, work with. So the great news is like every day, I bet you, you're gonna get triggered <laughs> by something, by the news, by someone driving, you know, by whatever the thing is. So there's ample opportunity to work with this through gentle contemplation if you want to learn more about um, contemplation and the practice of, of the gene keys, I'll put the link in, um, my affiliate link for the gene keys, and you can get a free gene key profile. Mm. The beautiful thing about that is you can look at, even if you don't understand it, look at the shadows on there and then look at the gifts in the cities, spend 10% of your time looking at the shadows and be like, Oh yeah, unease. That's one of mine, right? Yes. That's resonant for me intuition is the gift. Okay. You know, that can begin to just open up um, a pathway so you can see your, your shadows. Cause this is based on your birthday, where you're born and all of that. So that's one tool that you can use. Of course, um, you know, the 13 moon mystery school is a beautiful tool as well. And, you know, Flora knows lots about that as well in her programs. And um, my own lunar archetype quiz is sort of like a intro step into archetypes. And so instead of having 13 archetypes, I have a fun, what's your feminine lunar archetype quiz. Um, and if you want to take that, you can discover if it's the voice of the mother, the queen, the goddess, or the sage, and begin to understand these four basic, um, well, not basic, amazing feminine archetypes that live within us. And perhaps which one, because all archetypes have a shadow and a light quality. And you can see, oh, okay, maybe I'm in the shadow quality of the mother and I'm being over responsible or, 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 or I'm exhausted and I'm over giving. And then you also can see into the light, like what you could do instead. So that's available. And I can drop these into the chat, Laura, for you, if you want me yes. to. You know, anyone listening will have picked up that um, 
we are both we're we're both really into archetypal work and um it really is i mean I, I think we share the passion for it because of the the transformational nature of them, right? Yes. That it's, um, especially when it goes from conceptual to embodied, right. right? Because for years, like, like I read Joseph Campbell's The Power of Myth when I was like 18 or 19, you know, and then I was, you know, I was learning about archetypes, um, also because I was, you know, into the theater and acting and literature and understanding like literary archetypes. So it's like, if you'd asked me when I was 25, I'd be like, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I know, I know archetypes, right? Oh yeah, I know nothing about intellectual or spiritual superiority, right? <laughs> Especially when, you know, yeah. But it's like it's taking it from an understanding in the head, right? To there it actually being an embodied, an embodied understanding and also at, you know in terms of a spiritual practice like that's when it really changes everything um mm -hmm. for me anyway that's what i've seen and um and you know i'd love to hear a little bit more because i know you're you know you're learning more about these gene these gene keys and like is it is it, it's, it, it's kind of like an astrology, right? It's like a personal astrology. It's also similar to human design, right? Some people might have heard of human design. Yeah. yeah. So it takes elements of those two systems and also the I Ching. So it works with the hexagrams mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. it really gives you your profile. There's three sequences in it. There's the activation sequence, um, helps you find your gifts. So it's a beautiful place to start. And then there's the Venus sequence, which helps you open your heart. And then there's a prosperity sequence, the pearl sequence, which helps you um, really align to abundance. And even in the way that the sequence is, I love the system because it's asking us to like come from that place of, okay, what, what are my gifts coming from that place of wholeness? And then, you know, most of us, we would love to just jump right into the pearl, right? And unlock prosperity. But no, between, <laughs> that, between the gifts is the Venus sequence, which is about opening your heart because, you know, true prosperity is about creating that flow, that flow and with a closed heart. And the Venus sequence is about really unlocking and going into uh, some of the shadows that were created even in childhood and unwinding those wounds in order to find the gifts within each one of them. And that yeah. lands you like in your core vocation. And from there, like, I, I know it might seem like a lot of words, but just feel into knowing your gifts, being in the world with an open heart, those wounds from your heart transmuted into gifts, sitting right there at the triangle of prosperity and having that begin to open up. Like mm. even just, like for ourselves individually, that's so beautiful, but for our whole world, like if we all could step into our power, into our gifts, into our knowing with an open heart and begin to create prosperity for, for all, because mm -hmm. how can you, with an open heart, create a prosperous world that is not in equity for everyone? Yeah. So it's just, it's just a beautiful, beautiful system. Mm. beautiful gentle system as well mm. Thank and you. it requires patience so it's like if, it's, if you're wanting a quick fix <laughs> that's not the system for you <laughs> <laughs> yeah the quick fix culture right um and you know i guess it, maybe it's the maturity w or wisdom of of age now that i'm you know in my 40s but it's like rarely do those quick fixes work right yeah when they can come it's delightful but you know working with something you know shadows that sometimes it took years for those to get really fully ingrained it takes a while to unwind them yeah. I, love, I love that term of unwinding the wound you know mm. like peeling it back and knowing that underneath that wound there is some magical seed of possibility yeah, yeah beautiful um yeah, once again, thank you so much for joining me today, Aurora, and having this conversation. It, it is, it's such a, it's such a rich and deep topic. And, you know, we can only really kind of dance on the, 
on the surface of things, because what we're talking about is something that is such a, it is such a profoundly personal experience. Maybe this is my final thoughts here because it, no one can plumb your depths and do your shadow work for you, mm -hmm. right? This is, this is a journey that you are on, you are on your own in, on the one, in that one sense. And yet to, to have it happen the most easefully and effectively and in that, you know, in that uh, empowering way where you feel held is that's why I say, don't try to do it alone, even though you have to do it alone. It's just one, another paradox that we hold on the spiritual path. <laughs> Right. Yep. You're, you're so right. Yeah. yeah. Thank so you this, so much. For yeah. This, 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 the, the support of the sisterhood is so important for us to go through this work. And, um, and yeah, I really loved how you brought up that this, it, it isn't just for us as individuals, the, the alchemy, the alchemical healing, the shadow work is for, it, it's for our families. It's for our communities. It's for the world at large. Yes, it's for our our human evolution and evolution of this planet. So yes, it's it's important work, and I I highly suggest you try some. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a try a now we're like now we're like peddlers of like soul alchemy. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's a perfect way to end it for our personal and planetary evolution. <laughs> Let me know if you want some. <laughs> Well, I would love to end I, um, with something. I love the, that, but I did have a little prayer that I wanted to say. Oh, please. Do you feel? Yeah. Okay. So this is by Richard Rudd, who wrote the Gene Keys. And I, I feel like this is such a beautiful prayer and I'd love to share it wherever I can. And so it's called the Holy Incantation of Solace. And so I'm just deeply feeling into my heart and deep gratitude to you, Flora, for all that you are and all that you do and for being my soul sister and to all the people here who are listening now or on replay. And this is the prayer, the holy incantation of solace. May love pour through our soul, binding us together as one. May light flower in our heart, lending us the grace to transform all fear. May warmth radiate our belly, bringing prosperity to all. May purity shimmer in our bones, filling us with the light of the stars. May kindness resound in our voice, softening the way that lies ahead. May clarity shine through our mind as we lie in the arms of the infinite. May solace abound in our life, touching all who we meet. May solace abound in the world, bringing all beings into perfect union. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is. Beautiful. Well, with that, Blessed be. Thank you, Aurora. Thank you, everyone, and Awaken the Goddess Within. And I look forward to seeing the continued conversation in the comments and the group. Mm. Mm. Bye for now. Bye, everyone. Thank you.